Hi, everybody. It's August 1, 2021. For those who thought that I had just taken off for a couple of weeks because I wasn't posting on this channel, no, I couldn't post. I was grounded by YouTube due to whatever they claimed. I was posting on my backup channel, and I posted a lot of videos on the very devastating flooding, the fires, weather used as a weapon. My backup channel, the link is below this video uh, in the show. Just click on show more right below the video and scroll down. It's Never Lose Truth 2, then Kafka, which I, I don't, I made a mistake somehow and that came up. But there's been the kind of destruction due to weather all over the world. You know, China, Germany, Austria, uh, it's United States, um, all over, all over. And I've been doing this for 12 years. Now I see it every single day. And more and more are being pushed off the cliff due to just weather as a weapon. This, this is um, Arizona. Am I right? Yes, Arizona family. This terrifying video shows the moment flood water ripped through Jane Hill's home Thursday, flowing like a river around her ranch. I see it in my sleep. I will never feel the same about my home. A home destroyed by the flooding, leaving the hills and helpers cleaning up the aftermath. A lot of water came through this house. You can see the floors are full of mud and the water line comes up high at a little more than two and a half feet. Nothing would have stopped it. It washed this whole basin full of water. We are very, very lucky to be alive. Thankfully, Jane and her husband are okay after the crazy storm, but one of her dogs is missing. Another died in the house. And they got the little dogs and put them all on the furniture in the living room, which was floating around, and I cry really easy, especially when I think about my dogs. The floodwater swept away pets, memories, and the safety Jane once felt when calling this home. And yet, after surviving the fire and the massive flood, the rancher tries her best to stay positive as she rebuilds. I believe the prayer helps. I think that God parted the fire to go around us. It's going to be a long time before all this is cleaned up, so the family set up a GoFundMe page to help with everything that was lost. You can find that on the AZ Family app. Brittany Thomason, Arizona's Family. Look at this. Lightning strikes water. One more time. You know, we see this gushing water now. All over, all over. And very often when I watch these broadcasts, I don't see it raining. Okay, they claim that it's the rain that is making all of these mudslides and the, it, it, it's, well, if you saw the videos that I posted on my backup channel, you would know what I'm talking about. But something is going on. This is not just rainfall now. <clears throat> 
so many people, I, I guess, have this idea that they only use one method. And whatever method they think that they're using, that's the method. So if they hear somebody say something else, boom, they attack them as if they're a shill. It's still going on, which is amazing to me. But they have the technology and the tools to create lightning. Ordinary people can make them. Look, this is a, a hand held Tesla coil gun. Cameron is the real deal. When I was a kid, I collected baseball cards and rode my bike, not Cameron. His life changed forever the first time he saw a picture of Nikola Tesla. When I saw these pictures of him at Colorado Springs doing those experiments, sitting in front of, the, of his coil, all that lightning going around him, I was hooked. You know, most people were, when they were kids, were throwing baseballs and stuff. I had a box of light bulbs and wires and batteries. And, That's know. awesome. I like, it. I like it when people are excited about things. This makes it so much more fun. Okay, so what has he developed? A hand-held Tesla coil. Around you? <laughs> Only the gun could point anywhere. <laughs> so I'm going to step back here. <laughs> wow. So what's it arcing to? Why is it not why is it not coming back to ground? So that's the primary that's the uh, the coil. No, you do not have air cooling on that. Water I'll link below if you want to watch the end, but all I'm saying is there are so many different tools and methods that they have to create the kind of devastation that they are creating. Carlisle resident Billy Hitton leans up against the side of a car outside her business and her home, both of which she has had for 30 years inside. This is the kitchen where most of the stuff happened. One of her relatives walks me through that home and business, both damaged. I couldn't get out because the water was so deep. It was almost up to my neck. Her appliances, stove, oven, refrigerator, all gone, TVs, gone, and even some of the most sacred things. I lost all of my pictures, and uh, all my clothes are wet. Those in and around Carlisle say cleaning supplies are some of the most needed items. In neighboring Bourbon County, Paris police officers and firefighters spent Saturday afternoon collecting non-perishable food and bottled water. As customers came out of the grocery store, they left donations to deliver to Carlisle. They're, they don't know where the funding and when it's going to be here, so any monetary donation is going to be awesome to get for them. With so many precious items either inside or outside, there's a big need for totes and bins, just anything to save items close to heart. A lot of these people don't have anything to be able to store the items that they're trying to salvage. Um, they're also finding that cleaning supplies is very, very much so needed. So in the next few days, weeks, or months, it's a reminder to look after one another. When, when your neighbor needs help, you need to go and help them. What does this community need right now? Love. Love and understanding. Reporting in Nicholas County, Austin Pollock, LAX 18 News. Kentucky. Kentucky. Arizona. This is our weather now. This is it. The video dramatic, the flash flooding downright dangerous. Things escalating in a hurry east of the valley as monsoon storms move through. Michael in Miami sending us this video. He saw trash cans floating down the road, cars and trucks stranded, even a person trying to walk across something that is not safe to do. That's impressive, huh? Mary finding a safe place to shoot this video, that dark, murky water moving fast. You can see traffic backed up on the left of your screen, moving slowly as those floodwaters go through town. We have seen the aftermath, but here's a look at what caused it. This video showing that rain falling in Miami in real time, a downpour from a distance putting everything in motion. And not long after that heavy rain, this is what followed all that mud and debris flowing down that hillside, setting off for what would be a chaotic few hours ahead. 
Those rushing waters, nothing to mess with. As we've learned this week, they can turn deadly in a hurry. The Globe Miami area hit hard by storms, and now neighbors there dealing with the aftermath. Our Ashley Perez joining us live from Miami tonight. And Ashley, you've been talking with local officials and neighbors doing what they can to stay safe. Oh yeah, definitely. And these homes off of Canyon Avenue are the closest to the Telegraph Fire burn scar area. So they were hit the hardest. The wash is just a couple steps away from here. So once it started raining, it quickly flooded these homes and you can see just how high the waters rose. Then if you take a look down the street, check out these cars. They aren't going anywhere anytime soon. They're stuck in the mud. Many people affected by this. The level just continued to rise higher and higher, and there was all kinds of debris, and like a uh, really scary moment was a giant propane tank that hit the bridge, and um, the water level rose all the way to the level of the bridge and was splashing into the street, and then the street started to fill up. Okay, um, <clears throat> it's, it, it's all, it's, okay, guys. This is happening on a daily basis all over. And yeah, people need a lot of love, a lot of understanding, and a lot of help. A lot of help. Yeah, it's... I have gotten comments from people when I've posted these weather events. The comments read, Oh my God, that's the town right next to me and I didn't even know. So you might want to be um, checking out what's happening because a whole lot of people are really in need of help, you know, and all kinds of help, which can be given if you know what's going on. If you don't know what's going on, there's nothing you can do. 108 people got stuck on the highway as a result of flash flooding and mudslides last week. Authorities say some people waited it out in their cars, others got a little creative. Yeah, one man jumped into a CDOT forklift and started clearing the debris himself until the check engine light came on. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Denver 7 News at 5. I'm Ann Trujillo. And I'm Shannon Ogden. I-70 is now closed for almost 50 miles from West Rifle to Dotsero. CDOT's calling this an all-hands-on-deck response, and they don't know when the road's going to reopen. So let's give you some context of the sheer force of these mudslides. CDOT leaders said this afternoon that there were at least 10 mudslides through Glenwood Canyon. Some were 10 to 12 feet deep, 20 to 150 feet wide. One was so powerful that it broke through a retaining wall on I-70. McCall Redden spoke to CDOT leadership directly about their concerns today. And one man says he lives near I-70 and wanted to know if these frequent closures are a sort of new normal. The executive director of CDOT says it's more of a rough patch because of last year's wildfires. It's a rough patch. It's a rough patch. Don't you worry. <laughs> you know, uh, all right, this I-70, do a search. Mudslides, Colorado or Glenwood Canyon. Last month, three weeks ago, I-70 shut down, mudslides. Happens again, you know, it's, but the ripple effect of this is hurting the businesses. In a city like Glenwood Springs, its businesses rely on their customers as much as their customers rely on them. But that special relationship has been put to the test after multiple closures on I-70 through Glenwood Canyon. Last night we had maybe five tables at our dinner rush. April Bach is the assistant general manager at Village Inn. The restaurant is a staple here, often with wait times lasting more than a few hours on the weekends. This morning we haven't had a wait at all. And in fact, as you've seen inside, we've got multiple empty tables. Her employees are bearing the brunt of it, she says. A drop in customers means a drop in tips. And especially with COVID, the way things have been, people don't have savings like they did before. So we're all depending on a regular paycheck. You can't go three or four days without making the amount of money that you're used to making. But at Murphy Brown in downtown Glenwood, business is steady. It's interesting because I thought it might impact our sales. 
and it really hasn't. Susan Anderson says locals and tourists have been walking through the store's doors in the past two days. We've had people from uh, both Denver, Colorado Springs, Grand Junction, you know, so on and so forth. But with more rain in the forecast and an extended I-70 closure in place, Susan hopes people can still find their way here. I certainly would say look at your alternatives and hopefully you can come. But be safe. The detours. Be safe. Wild weather also causing. All right. So <clears throat> the last video was Colorado and we've done Arizona and we did Kentucky. Um, am I forgetting any uh, states yet? I don't think so, but it, we've got New Jersey. Damage a little closer to home as well. In Bergen County, New Jersey, a large tree fell, was uprooted, and crashed into a home in Glen Rock. The roof and the side of the house was left damaged. No word on any injuries there. Elsewhere in New Jersey, roads turned into raging rivers. This was the scene from Park Avenue in West Caldwell. You can see floodwaters racing, racing down the street, leaving this car and shed partially submerged. All kinds of flooding, also a problem in nearby Nutley. We saw a car stuck in the middle of the road, deep in the water. An earlier video from Twitter showing heavy floodwaters moving through moments after the storm hit. The You know, it, I mean, if you don't know about the flooding just in the last month here, or let's do it six weeks, uh, Detroit and all of what has taken place, when, when you think of Detroit, how many times did they get flooded? Like three or four times in what amounts to maybe three weeks? Massive flooding? And then all the tornadoes, the flooding, the fires. Okay, we've got a lot going on, a whole lot going on. But let's just interject uh, this. And now we're learning that scientists and researchers are looking at how to change the weather on purpose. That's right, lasers now could one day manipulate rain and lightning. CBS This Morning contributor Michio Kaku is a physics professor at City College of New York. Professor, nice to see you. Extraordinary seeing Al Gore and Bill Clinton there together with Charlie, wasn't it? That's right, yeah. Yeah, they did not get into this discussion, no. though. <laughs> but it is fascinating. I mean, lasers, really, to change the weather? That's right. Well, as Mark Twain once famously said everyone complains about the weather but no one ever does anything about it well instead of doing a rain dance we physicists are firing trillion watt lasers into the sky to actually precipitate rain clouds and actually bring down lightning bolts this is potentially a game changer but this is experimental it's experimental however in the laboratory so far it works when you have water vapor and you have dust particles or ice crystals, you can precipitate rain. It condenses around the seeds. These seeds can also be created by laser beams. By firing trillion watt lasers, you rip apart the electrons, creating what are called ions, and these ions act like seeds, like dust particles, bringing down rain and even lightning. Go ahead. Well, I, I, this is fascinates me in part because, too, I remember reading the stories that China had used this during the Olympics, that the USSR had used this after Chernobyl to create rain clouds. I mean, w did those really work then? We have some of these capabilities now? Inconclusive. Even in the 60s, the CIA used this to uh, bring down monsoons during the Vietnam War to wash out the Viet Cong. Governments have been playing with alleged this to. thing. Alleged to. Alleged to, right. Yeah. Now, we realize that for decades now, these governments have been alleged to have experimented with weather control, but nothing conclusive. This time we're bringing in the laws of physics rather than simply uh, waving our hands and uttering mumbo jumbo. <laughs> we're actually using trillion watt lasers yeah. now. And in the laboratory, sure enough, they precipitate rain out of water vapor. Sure okay. Gotta love it, right? No, you could don't. Don't love it. Okay. <laughs> Vietnam. There were Senate hearings about the weather modification that was taking place. I'm upset that I've lost all of my research and those Senate hearings, they were talking about what our military was doing in Vietnam. It was admitted that yes, we were 
uh, conducting weather modification to bring down all of these rains. And in fact, in that hearing, I think it was Senator Pell who asked, you know, one of our generals, you know, you're, you're not going to be doing anything like melting the ice caps. No, Senator. No, of course. Okay. So how dare she say allegedly? How dare she say that? Okay. No, oh, ma'am. See, when Americans watch this, and those who love the lies and are remaining willfully ignorant, they love those words. Oh, okay. It was alleged. Oh. Inconclusive. China performing weather modification uh, to clear the uh, clouds or rain so that the Olympics could be fabulous? Inconclusive? Really? Uh, what was the other word? Experimental. Oh, it's ex we do this in the lab and it works. Okay. Well, then a whole lot of people will say, well, you got to have clouds. And what if there's no clouds? Well, man can make clouds. Here, just listen to this for a few minutes. High into the clouds. Why silver iodide? Because what that, that has the same crystallized structure as ice. So once it gets up into the clouds, it starts to accumulate ice on it and these large raindrops, which helps, especially in a you know a cloud mass that's not really going to rain. It helps to bring rain and especially snow down. So it works. It does work, marginally. But the problem with silver iodide through the I'm sorry, my mic is leaving me because I'm having difficulty pausing it and unpausing it, but marginally. Marginally? It works marginally. Texas Weather Modification Association, the former director, giving an interview to mainstream media, and I can't remember which outfit it was. What did he say? They can make they can make the rain come down uh, for longer periods of time for a much bigger area and produce a tremendous amount of rain. Oh, wow. Texas Weather Modification Association has a YouTube channel. If you don't know about what is going on with this weather modification, that's a good place. Listen to these guys. They talk about, and I think it's once a month, they have these, uh, it's a regulation board, and they talk about the success of making it rain in so many different counties in Texas, marginally. Years has been this is that they, they feel it could be harmful to aquatic life. Okay. Cloud seeding. How long have we been? Well, I have read in documents the environmental impact of cloud seeding. There is no impact. It's perfectly safe, even for aquatic life. Now we're hearing something different. Oh, it may not be so good for that life, right? So done. Mainstream media lying all of all over. Just it's so disgusting. They they feel it could be harmful to aquatic life. Okay. Okay. So over in Dubai, which is what you're seeing here, they took it a different step, and what they basically did, they had a fleet of drones that flew up into cloud cover, and they they used electrical charges to force water droplets to combine into larger ones. So not silver, not cloud no, seeding as we no, know. No, no, right. they're not using the traditional silver iodide, which takes out the environmental right. aspect of that, okay? So they're using just 
electricity to create larger raindrops. Why larger raindrops? Because in Dubai, they only average about four inches of rain per year as most of the rain that falls out of the clouds evaporates. Because it's so hot, it's so dry, and the water molecules are so tiny. So they're trying to stimulate by using electricity these droplets to be larger. Hence... Okay, I'll link below to this. You can watch it. Um, wow, that's quite a lot of rain in the desert. Look, flooding. Wow. Oh. Could they have this technology in the good old U.S. of A.? When we are number one, number one, number one. I mean, we're, we're the tech geniuses. Maybe we have that technology as well. But, okay, can they make clouds? Yeah, they certainly can. Here, Foreign Technology Division. Artificial clouds in the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, this was a 1950s, or what's the date on this? 1988. It's a paper about the uh, Soviet experiments, Soviet experiments on artificial cloud making during the 1950s. And let me just show you what they've you. Oh God, I have again this uh, PDF program doesn't work very well. Okay, so the artificial clouds in the 1950s, Soviet scientist, English scientist, um, well, they had an idea of creating an artificial luminous cloud. They put a small amount, discharged a small amount of sodium vapor into the atmosphere, and voila, experiment confirmed, success. They created artificial clouds. What else did they put into the atmosphere after that? After the sodium, they put other substances into the atmosphere, like lithium and potassium and cesium and barium oxide and europium and titanium tetrachloride and trimethyl aluminum. Wow. Seems to be the same ingredients of the geoengineers. Okay, now our atmosphere is so saturated from the geoengineering that has been taking place, only increasing uh, every year for decades, but include an awful lot more, like the strontium and the black carbon dust. And, uh, well, just with these ingredients that they have saturated the atmosphere now with, they created artificial clouds. Artificial clouds. And you know what? Here, let me take you down because that PDF program, I highlighted everything. So, how about here? Um, where is it? Hang on. Okay, so with those ingredients, what did they find? They found an astonishing spectacle whose beauty is probably only exceeded by the polar aurora uh, begins to unfold in the sky. A long blue-green wake forms in the atmosphere from the discharge of trimethyl aluminum interspersed with red and orange sphere from the discharges of lithium and sodium and somewhere on the very top of the wake barium bursts out in a light blue cloud, ionized. They can make neutral clouds, they can make ionized clouds, and we see them all the time. This was taken in um, Montana a couple of months ago, and I've seen these for years. Since I've seen them with my own eyes since 2011. Wow. Oh, wow. Green, pinkish, reddish, all different colors. No, this is not a natural cloud. This is an artificial cloud made by man. So if they can produce these clouds, not this one in particular, but with black carbon dust, wow, they can make those clouds 
humongous. Hit them with a laser and voila, you got a rain flood. In Arizona, you know, a rain bomb. God, this has been going on for so long, I can't stand it. But the flooding has been tremendous. You know, utterly tremendous. Um, and I also have here another video on a whole lot of documents on how to create artificial clouds. And a, yeah, weather modification playlist with a whole lot you know, uh, a whole lot of different technologies to create weather. Scalar technology, uh, Doppler radar, HARP, Doppler radar, NEXRAD radar is essentially a, uh, a mini HARP station. The Gwen Towers that are, that literally litter our interstates. And isn't it interesting that we have an awful lot of these so-called weather fronts that they drive along the interstate. Well, Gwen Towers, which emit extremely low frequencies up into the atmosphere, they can steer the jet stream, they can uh, steer a weather front. They can also emit those extremely low frequencies through the ground. And isn't it interesting that rain now destroys so many bridges and roads? Well, those extremely low frequencies can do that. Are you going to get help? Let's listen to what happened in Detroit. Good afternoon, Glenda. FEMA wanted us to do this story as they continue to take applications throughout both counties, Wayne and Washtenaw, and clear up some confusion. FEMA is designed to help people who don't have enough insurance coverage to cover all of their losses. We did our first story earlier this week with a homeowner who got some insurance coverage but didn't cover much of her damage, in fact, only a fraction. She applied for FEMA help. She was denied. And she was told why. They don't cover um, drywall, flooring, nothing if nobody lives in the basement. It's considered completely non-essential. Is she wrong? Right. No, she's correct. That means people who had personal property stored in a basement, lost it all in the water will not get that covered by FEMA. That means people who lost carpeting, tile floors, walls and all the water will not get that covered by FEMA. FEMA will cover tear out, cleanup and sanitization costs not covered by insurance. FEMA will cover the cost of hot water tanks, washers and dryers, a furnace. But get this, don't expect to be made completely whole. The assistance that FEMA provides is not, not meant to make a home the way it was pre-disaster. Take a look. FEMA has people going door to door taking applications for assistance. This is in Dearborn Heights, but word is spreading by the dozens how people are being turned down. Six posts on next door a day about people being denied. We found Clarence Smith has his own water damage from sewer backups in his home and rental properties he owns. Government has to help the citizens. Simple as that city, state, federal government. Down the street from him is Diane Cottle, who's lived here 50 years. FEMA told us personal belongings, restoration costs can be covered with SBA, low interest loans. We need relief from the government. We need it to be released so that we could get something done without it being a loan for a disaster. A lot. Right. You can take out a loan but that needs to be paid back. Why are these people saying government needs to step in and help them? Because it's government that has done this. Now, a whole lot of them don't know about weather modification, but they sure as hell know about the sewage backup into their homes that have, how many homes in Detroit alone? Thousands flooded thousands forget about getting help we have to rely on one another because you're not going to get help from government and the little bit that people are getting it's going to dwindle 
further. You know, <laughs> this I think, where is this? Um, not sure. This morning, many towns and villages along parts of the Vermont New Hampshire border are cleaning up. Yeah, it comes after that big round of rain last night. Roads flooded, cars submerged, even some people rescued from their homes. Let's take you to Putney, Vermont, where crews shut down at least 10 roads as firefighters responded to calls about flooding. Even I-91 was partially closed. The interstate has reopened, but you'll want to use caution on some of the local roads this morning. And it was also an active night in Bellows Falls. Firefighters were responding and very busy to responding to flooding calls in the areas of Hyde Hill, Laurel Avenue, and Wells Street. As you can see, water was waist deep in some spots. Firefighters helped pump water out of basements. We're told highway staff will be back out this morning, fixing road damage in the town and village. You know, look, I lived in Massachusetts for a long time. Grew up in New York. This kind of stuff never, ever happened before. And again, you know, people are just not thinking because it's not climate change. All they have to do is do the research to find out that that is a complete and utter farce. It is not true. Man is controlling weather. Man is bringing about all of this destruction. Now, flooding and debris flows are being reported in Beaver. Take a look at this picture. The National Weather Service says nearly an inch of rain fell in just 10 minutes. These photos are from Gary Walker. They show standing water near South Creek Loop Road. And at the Canyon Breeze Golf Course, there have been reports of half-dollar coin-sized hail coming down there. At least one large tree has fallen, and several more tree branches have broken off as well. And you can see from this video and this picture, the rain was falling hard and fast, creating streams of rushing water all over the Gulf. Rushing water. Another rushing water all over. Well, this was Utah. That you just saw was Utah. This is Cedar City, Utah. Um, this, this we see all over the world now. Every time it rains, somehow... Cars get flooded out. They start floating down streets. You have, you have this gush of water that's gushing with quite the force. What is happening? Well, people need to start questioning what is happening because this is not climate change. Navajo Nation. The storms have been dramatic, constant, and at times devastating. The outcome for some has been far-reaching. My sister, who has three very young children, um, you know, only her husband works. He couldn't get to work yesterday, and so they had to literally choose between him getting a paycheck yesterday. That's Arizona legislator Jasmine Blackwater Nigren. She lives in and represents Navajo Nation. These are photos her family's taken of the roads outside their homes after the storms. The roads have been washed out. Um, and I believe it was yesterday that the roads were so bad that um, in the morning time, you know, people weren't able to get to work. They weren't able to drive through the roads um, because, you know, it's a dirt road and the roads were washed out. It's a problem for many roads now, but it's an ongoing issue. Here's video of major storms in 2018 and then fixing damage in 2020. In fact, of the more than 14,167 miles of roads in Navajo Nation, more than 9,000 miles or 84 percent are dirt roads. If it's and where it's paved, it's really nice. And if you've ever been to uh, the Navajo area of Arizona, then you don't know. But it is, you know, just these dirt roads. But what washes them away and creates so much muddy, muddy, mud that they literally are stuck in their homes and they can't get out? Okay. Um... God, there's more. There's more that I have. I mean, I, I just cannot believe, you know, the Colorado uh, Glenwood uh, mudslide cars literally buried, buried. And people were very scared. Um, this uh, WMUR, New Hampshire, yeah, lots of damage. The... Uh, 
once again, I've seen this happen to a lot in our country. Roads literally just blocking people in their homes because they're the only ones with the driveway and they can't get out of their home. Um, it, Flagstaff. You watch this video, and I, I don't want to play it because I'm afraid of getting a copyright strike, but this guy is here. He's filming it, and you there's no rain. Okay, it's not raining, but the water is coming, and it's coming fast, and they're moving away from it, and where is it going? It's filling up the streets. It's filling up the streets. Come on, move along, please. And homes flood. Where is all of this water coming from? People really need to start asking questions. You know, it's really important. You know, don't listen to the government officials and your mainstream media tell you this is just Mother Nature and it's climate change and we've got to do something fast because the climate change agenda is about controlling every aspect of your life, telling you where you can live, getting you out of the car. You'll have a bike or you can walk. You won't be able to travel. And all you have to do is just go to the United Nations website, look at Agenda 21, look at Agenda 2030. You know, uh, all right, ma'am, I'm so, it's so hard watching this kind of destruction, you know, over and over again and seeing how many people are in such need of help Man, it just hurts, you know. Well, I'll link below uh, to some of it. The, the videos that I said you can watch till the end. But every day now, guys, every day, every day, this is happening. The amount of Americans going under, unless, unless you really search it out, you don't know.